Hey, buddy, watch this. Hello, hello, Regis Kilbin is the name, and Heroes of the Storm is the game. And we're taking a look at the new hero, Li Ming. She has hit the public test realm. I've been playing her a lot, and I've already nailed down this particular build that I think is going to see a lot of play. This is a build I'm calling the Illusionist Li Ming. Now, Li Ming is very much a glass cannon. That's one way to play her. I've got another build that focuses on that mentality, which is sacrificing all defensive abilities for absolute maximum damage. But this build is basically the exact opposite of that. Because here's the thing. Li Ming's abilities hit very, very hard on their own. So, for instance, Arcane Orb hits for 813 damage at its maximum at level 20. Uh, Magic Missiles hits for 300 damage every 3 seconds. 900 damage if all 3 missiles were to hit uh, their target. So, uh, your Heroic Disintegrate does 1200 damage almost at level 20. So all these things hit very, very hard. So, uh, while it's super fun, and if you're incredibly good, it's very powerful to build her for maximum damage. Uh, an alternative, and a much safer way to play Li Ming is to actually focus on defensive abilities and just letting the base levels of damage stand for themselves. So you don't need to work all that hard in order to do a ton of damage as leaming. As long as you're activating your trait often and you are utilizing your trait often, getting into a rhythm with abilities, hitting your skill shots, the damage potential is already there. And since she is one of the squishiest heroes in the game outside of special cases like Murky, uh, you need that defensive utility. Now, she does, of course, have a teleport built into her base kit, but it typically has a much smaller range than this, which we'll get into later. So it doesn't necessarily offer all the defensive utility you need. Otherwise, you'll just get focused down so easily, and opponents will kill you so quickly that you won't have time to take advantage of your damage and certainly won't ever get uh, procs off your trait, which is when you can really utilize all those extra cooldowns and pump out just absurd amounts of damage. So, that said... The best way to play this build is to stay safe, utilize your teleport your teleport regularly and often, uh, stay on the fringe of fights, stay near a healer or a peeling tank as needed, poke from long range with your long range abilities. You'll notice that uh, all of our abilities have some decent range to them, so it's not too hard to stay in the right place and just hit people from very far away. That does mean you probably won't be utilizing your auto attacks very often, but that's totally fine. You want your abilities to do the work. You want to get kills and just keep pounding in abilities. So, uh, without further delay, let's go ahead and just run through each of the talents real quickly, and then we'll discuss them in more detail. Starting off level 1, Force Armor. The S of Johan. I don't know what that means either. Zai's Vengeance, Disintegrate, Illusionist, which of course gives this build its name, Diamond Skin, and then finally, Temporal Flux. So there you have it, that's the Illusionist Li Ming build, all about defense, teleporting, and subtle base damage, but it uh, doesn't really end up being all that subtle at all, because it still hits very, very hard. So... In more detail, up first, Force Armor. When magic missiles damages an enemy hero, you gain a charge of spell block, reducing the next, or reducing the damage from the next enemy ability against you by 50%. You can hold up to four charges of this, and you can only gain one charge per cast. So you'll notice that magic missiles has three different projectiles. Even if all three of these were to hit a target, you don't instantly get three charges of spell block. You only get one per cast, but uh, this ability has a 3 second cooldown, and you can kind of spam it pretty regularly. So you'll be building charges of um, spell block rather often, as long as you're regularly hitting your skill shots. And stacking up to 4 means it's going to be very hard to kill you if a mage is targeting you, which can be very nice. Of course, you'll still be susceptible to auto attack damage, but area of effect spells or burst single target spells... Um, certainly won't hurt as bad as long as you're constantly recharging those force armor charges, which isn't all that hard to do again, because magic missiles is a little tough to aim, but there is some uh, leeway and flexibility in aiming it. For instance, um, you don't have to hit a target dead on. If I am trying to hit the target dummy, for instance, um, 
even if I even if I'm a little short, right? You're still gonna have some missiles make contact. The the berth of the missiles is wide enough that you'll still hit things pretty often, even though it looks like a pretty narrow skill shot. So this will trigger surprisingly often and give you a lot more defensive edge than you might realize. Moving on to level four, the S of Johan. I guess this is like the essence of Johan. When Arcane Orb damages, damages enemies, they are pulled towards its center. So let's see this in action. Uh, there are some damage-based abilities in this tier that will certainly increase your damage a little more than this one. But this one has some crowd control and some utility. I wanted to hit Arthas there, but... So you'll notice that uh, you can disrupt the position of opponents. So that can be pretty good. Even if you're um, fleeing from an enemy, you can pop this, and if it, it makes contact, it, it can move them a little bit. It can disrupt spell shots. Uh, it's a little bit of crowd control. It slows them down on occasion if... Um, if they've got, uh, if they're if they're moving rapidly, it can and basically move, change their direction left or right, so that you can gain a little bit of a diagonal advantage. So, uh, it's craft control. It allows you to set up uh, for allies to hit people in a smaller area for uh, area effect damage as well. Now, it seems subtle, I'll admit, uh, but still, the utility of disruption shouldn't be underlooked, right? See, he was fleeing there, so. We pulled him back a couple steps. That might be just enough for us to land the magic missiles and secure the kill. So, has defensive utility as a kind of a baby crowd control effect. Admittedly, it's not much, but it can do some cool stuff like that. It's also great when you're chasing opponents down and trying to secure the kill to activate your critical mass trait. So, S of Johan, good offensively, uh, decent defensively as well, which is really what this build's all about. Moving on to level 7, Zai's Vengeance. Arcane Orb does an additional 25% more damage to enemies far away, but will deal 25% less damage to enemies up close. Now, this is an offensive talent uh, in nature, but it's actually still a little bit defensive, right? Because it encourages us to stand farther away and maximize our range at any given time, because we want enemies to line up in the far edge of this last circle to make sure that we're maximizing our damage from Arcane Orb. So anytime you're standing farther away, you might be a little bit safer as long as you don't isolate yourself for a kind of a backdoor gank or a flank attack. Uh, but generally, if you can commit less positionally and stand farther away and still do stuff like hit this gate for huge amounts of damage, a thousand damage, uh, that's pretty good. It gives you more time to escape. It gives you more flexibility with your teleport. So. Offensive, technically in nature, but still provides a little bit of defensive use as well. And the other talents in this tier are really all about damage. Calamity, in fact, <laughs> is pretty cool. Anytime you teleport somewhere, it does 500 damage when you land there to things in that area. But that's extremely committal and very risky, and usually you don't want to teleport near people. Uh, so that one's not defensive in nature at all. Uh, moving on, level 10, our heroic, we're going to choose Disintegrate. Channels a powerful beam, dealing 1169 damage over two and a half seconds. Of course, you can control this beam as well. As you can see here, we're just going to shred this gate with lots and lots of pretty little purple numbers. Uh, you'll notice the range on Disintegrate is pretty long range, so we can poke gates really without any risk, and it has a 20 second cooldown normally, so uh, that's a very short cooldown for a very strong heroic ability. Wave of Force is solid. It has some crowd control utility. Uh, can help protect you if you cast it right on your feet. Can knock off um, melee opponents who are chasing you. But um, we actually are going to add some crowd control to Disintegrate at level 20. So we don't mind the loss of crowd control so much at level 10. Not to mention that the range on Wave of Force is much shorter than the range on Disintegrate. So to use it well, it typically means you're either already in trouble, you're already too hard engaged in a skirmish or too deep in a skirmish that uh, melee attackers might be encroaching upon you. Uh, and it does less damage overall. And we still do want to have that max damage potential with Li Ming as, as much as we can. So uh, it definitely has some defensive utility, but this build still has to have damage and Disintegrate. We're gonna pick up some of that extra utility later on in the range is still defensive in nature too. So 
Disintegrate will help keep you alive. Moving on to level 13 and the talent that gives this uh, build its name. It is Illusionist. This increases your teleport range by 50%. And you'll notice that this is actually a pretty decent range. Uh, normally, it's just a very small circle around Li Ming. You might know the, the range just from playing irregularly without this talent. But I am surprised how big of a difference this makes. Now, note, too, that this is almost practically a five-second blink. It's not quite as long of a range as blink, but it, it's awfully close if it's not. I'm not 100% sure on the, the ranges of each, but you can teleport surprisingly far here, which is in very useful when you're this squishy. Uh, so you can use it to gain distance on an opponent who is chasing you. You can use it to get yourself out of a skill shot, like a precision strike that might be landing right there in the middle of the lane. You can just use it for uh, speed and utility when chasing down opponents. Um, the distance is practically twice as far, right? It says increased teleport range by 50%, but I don't know if that's the radius or if it's the area, but it sure feels farther than half as far. It feels practically twice as far. So anyway, the, the difference between the standard um, teleport ability and the talented one to me is very substantial and significant in how useful that it becomes. But this actually has a side benefit as well. If you lose more than 15% of your health at once, teleport's cooldown is instantly refreshed. So imagine a butcher has ran in and attacked you. He's caught you off guard, right? And you decide to teleport away, but he uses his little run, chase, stun. I think it's called Ruthless Onslaught. And he chases you down and he stuns you. And you think, oh my goodness, I am done for. I have no escape. I have to wait another three seconds for teleport to come up. But... If you take 15% of your health at once, that cooldown is instantly reset. Well, guess what? Butcher hits for about 500 damage. And 15% of 2702, if you do the math, is about what 405 damage. So even an auto attack from Butcher is enough to actually trigger this cooldown reduction. Auto attacks from Thrall, any kind of heavy hitting damage spell from like a Kel'Thas or a Jaina is going to be enough to trigger this. So it sounds like a lot, 15% of your health at once, but that will go off more often than you might think. So this will be triggering itself quite regularly, giving you extra teleports. So I don't think I have to explain how useful an extra blink uh, every four seconds can be, right? Because you're getting one every five seconds normally. This can trigger every four seconds. Now, you won't want to be in a position where this triggers more than once or twice in a fight because it probably means you're out of position or taking too much damage. But it's there when you need it in those key moments when you're about to die. You're looking to gain a little bit of extra ground. You're throwing this to disrupt their position. You're hitting some magic missiles to kill them, right? So that gives you that extra reach and that extra um, escape range that you might need. And that's why the build is called the Illusionist Leeming. I think this is really one of the defining talents for Leeming. It just gives her so much extra survivability and is certainly core to this build as well. Moving on, uh, we have another defensive teleport based talent. This time it's Diamond Skin at level 16. When you teleport, gain 25% of your maximum health as a shield for four seconds. So really this is just doubling down on what Illusionist offers us. Anytime we're teleporting, you'll notice that shield popping up. 25% of 2700 is what? Something like 650 damage. I didn't do the math, but it should be pretty close to that. So uh, that's pretty fantastic. Uh, actually, it's yeah about 670 damage, it looks like. So 675 maybe. That's a lot. That's, that's a mitigation of you know, a couple auto attacks of a big ability. So if you time your teleports well, you can not only use them to escape damage, but to mitigate future damage. The shield does last for four seconds. It's not incredibly long. It's not as long as like a Tassadar shield, uh, but it's long enough in those big moments when people are trying to focus you down that might just give you the extra second for the healer to get the heal off or the tank to peel, just keep you alive to pump out a little extra damage. So Diamond Skin is pretty fantastic. And then finally, excuse me, at level 20, we're going to take Temporal Flux. Disintegrate slows enemies by 60%. Now, Disintegrate, of course, is our heroic ability. 
and it's now adding in a 60% slow. 60% slow is really slow. Uh, Jaina, for instance, slows enemies by 25%, and sometimes that feels inescapably slow, like just enough to get a kill, right? But 60% is insane. Let's see if we can get this off on Arthas and, and get him to run, perhaps, after a couple of these with no cooldowns. We might see how slow he moves. Yeah, you can see how slow he's moving there. So this is great for a couple reasons, right? One, if you have... Look at that. That's so fantastic. If you have a melee who's encroaching upon you... Um, just finish it off there. Trying to get a kill. Uh, if they're running right at you, right? You can just cast the slow and buy yourself a few seconds to do tons of damage and keep them from getting to you, which is nice. Also, if you have an opponent who's fleeing, much like this, uh, it buys you time to pump in extra damage before they escape the range of Disintegrate, right? And you want to get kills and stack kills as Li Ming because your critical mass trait starts building and your cooldowns are all refreshed, right? And that includes Disintegrate. So if you have three or four enemies here all fleeing, you kill one and they're really slow and your enemy team wipes, or your, your allies wipe them out with you, guess what? Disintegrates right back up. You go for number two and you go for number three. I've already used this a couple times to hit multiple enemies fleeing right in a row just because it keeps uh, resetting the cooldown every time we secure the kill. So situations like this where you have enemies just running and it's just constantly up every time one dies are pretty fantastic to see. So this ups your damage output, uh, your total damage potential, also has crowd control utility which is something that's very important to us. As laming, we want to control people, we want to disrupt people's positions, we want to move ourselves around the battlefield because we always need to have that mobility advantage and that defensive edge to give us the time and the space we need to do damage. So that's really what this build is all about at a fundamental level. One more time, let's run through it. It's Force Armor, S of Johan, Zyze of Vengeance, Disintegrate, Illusionist, Diamond Skin, and then finally, Temporal Flux. Uh, this is not quite the most fun way to play um, Leeming in my mind it it doesn't do the biggest damage numbers which is a little sad but it's the safest and most effective way to play Leeming that I've found so far this is the build that'll keep you alive keep you around let you pump out those huge numbers over a much longer period of time instead of dying instantly to so many random things so there you have it that is the illusionist Leeming build get out there and try it have fun with this incredibly fun new hero Thanks so much for watching, and until next time, game on.